What is it that no man wants to have, yet no man wants to lose? A lawsuit. Correct, boy wonder. <laughs> the Riddler's origins explored. Riddle me this. Who loves question marked paraphernalia? The color green. And is about to finally get the nuanced on-screen portrayal he so rightfully deserves? There's something delightfully straightforward about second-tier comic book villains that get you invested in them despite their woefully simplistic motivations. Not every character will get a Joker-esque background lore compendium, complete with Tarantino-level depictions of mania and graphic violence. I'd like you to meet the great Batman. He's here because he hasn't got a clue. <laughs> but that's what makes them so fun to invest in. They're like wrestling gimmicks given corporal form, with their zany antics and borderline comical origin stories fueling their villainous intentions. DC's greatest detective has a rogues gallery teeming with heavy hitters whose actions affect not just Gotham City, but the DCU on a grander scale. At the same time, he has to also deal with ruffians whose seemingly petty ambitions often drive the caped crusader to the end of his wits. Light as a feather, yet no man can hold it long. What am I? Your breath. These fiends aren't driven by a moral quest or an unquenchable thirst for power. They just want to watch the world burn and have some fun as they strike the first match. It just so happens that one of the Dark Knight's most enduring adversaries is a guy who really, really likes puzzles. First appearing in Detective Comics number 140, all the way back in 1948. The Riddler has given Bruce Wayne sleepless nights for decades with nothing more than a steel rod and his wits. And with Matt Reeves's the Batman, featuring him in the primary antagonist's role, there's never been a better time to discuss the origins of the Prince of Puzzlers. This is the Riddler's Origins Explored. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. But my name... Is the Riddler. So the headlines say. Riddler's Origins. Like every comic book character in existence, the Riddler's origins and backstory have received multiple tweaks over the decades. But unlike other major DCU characters, these weren't retcon. Rather, they were additions that added philosophical and psychological layers to his initially goofy characterization. Edward Nigma, yes, the pun is not lost on us, had always been obsessed with puzzles. He was a brilliant student and possessed a very keen sense of curiosity and thirst for knowledge since young age. He'd often sit at the feet of adults, peppering them constantly with questions, a habit that seemed to carry over into his academic life, much to the annoyance of everyone as depicted in DC's annual story, Questions Multiple the Mystery. When he was in the sixth grade, Edward's teacher announced a puzzle-solving competition with an unspecified prize. A young Edward saw this as his opportunity to get the attention he so desperately craved. He began breaking into his school after hours and practicing the puzzle to perfect his timing. And on the day of the competition, he finished it in 15 seconds astonishing his peers and teachers. His reward would seal his fate, an awesome puzzle book, and the attention of every bully in his school. You see, his childhood was pockmarked with physical trauma at the hands of his father. He'd always been a smart kid and got grades that would normally make a parent's chest swell up with pride. Oh, Mr. Nigma was of suspicious stock, however, and concluded that Edward had cheated to get them, commencing a period of abuse that left his psyche permanently scarred. All the mistrust and mistreatment led to a single conclusion in his mind. Intellect is superior to raw strength. And he would use his own mind to prove it. Quite an experience being riddled with questions, isn't it, Batman? Negative life experiences and dubious attention turned this would-be genius into a validation-hungry, puzzle-fixated maniac. 
He started out small, hoodwinking carnival goers into playing an unsolvable puzzle that lined his pockets with enough money to get by. But soon, he grew bored, and emboldened by his successes, hatched a scheme that would see his name plastered on every screen and newspaper in Gotham City. He targeted the ultimate puzzle solvers in his quest to reveal the truth, law enforcement. He donned the persona of the Riddler and proceeded to toy with Gotham police, embarking on his journey to criminal infamy, often flanked by his wild and willing assistants, Query and Echo. His methods are complex and deceptive. The police weren't even able to tell that the criminal was sending them clues leading to him for his first few felonies. It was only when Batman got involved that they were able to uncover this information. Fueled by an intellectually matched adversary, the Riddler decided to make Batman his ultimate truth designing elaborate death traps to put an end to Gotham's protector and expose him. Over the decades, he has teamed up with many rogues from Batman's gallery, but has almost always come up short of defeating the world's greatest detective. Let's take a look at some of the biggest storylines to feature his riddles. Move according to the rules or it's the end of the day. Major Story Arcs Despite not being one of Batman's primary adversaries, the Riddler has become somewhat eponymous with the caped crusader, thanks to fantastic character progression and some extremely well-received storylines. Riddler's introduction to DC couldn't have been more perfect, as he confounds Batman and Robin with his eclectic puzzles in their first encounter, which built to the now iconic Maze Riddle that solidified his position as a worthy mental adversary for Bruce Wayne. Of course, in the end, Batman solved the puzzle and made his escape, as the glass maze which he was trapped in was blown up by the Riddler, with the Prince of Puzzlers himself getting blasted away, leaving a floating question mark in his wake. After two weeks of taunting our dynamic duo, he was finally apprehended and sent on his first trip to jail. Now, out on parole, he promptly resumed his criminal activities, though he feigned reform for a good few issues, even working alongside Batman and helping him solve certain crimes. His deceptions were always discovered, though, and he invariably ended up in Arkham. How did he do it? I have to know! Somebody tell me! It's not fair! There was no way I- Two of the most talked about Riddler story arcs before the new 52 reboot have to be the one-shot Riddler and the Riddle Factory, as well as the critically lauded Hush storyline, where Jeff Lebb transformed the Riddler from a Jim Carrey meme to a life-threatening menace on par with first-tier Batman antagonists like Joker, Penguin, and Poison Ivy. Riddler and the Riddle Factory is a fun, light-hearted read. If your definition of fun and light-hearted includes a murderous game of riddles, Scarface, Scarelli, was a well-known mobster who operated in Gotham well before Bruce Wayne put on a menacing cow. It was rumored that he had buried treasures somewhere underneath Gotham City. And the Riddler can't say no to all that sweet cheddar cheese just lying around. So he rounded up all known associates of Scarelli and threw them in a game show themed death trap to find out the treasure's location. 2003's Hush gave Edward Nigma's nefarious schemes a decidedly darker tone. It was revealed that he had brain cancer and he had used the Lazarus Pits to fix himself. But the Lazarus Pits heal you at a cost, that being temporary insanity. And yet somehow, mid-psychotic breakdown, an epiphany dawned upon the Riddler, the figured out Batman's true identity. He tried to offer the same to his envy-addled childhood friend, Thomas Elliot, for a large sum of money, of course but was rebuffed with a proposition that was particularly enticing for the Prince of Puzzlers. This led to the birth of Hush, who manipulated and turbocharged his way to supervillain infamy by breaking down Batman's spirit in 12 short issues. It's a fantastic series that explores unseen pockets of the Riddler's personality and sets up his character's aura perfectly for the new 52. After the reboot, Edward Nigma got the distinction of being the entity that sealed Bruce Wayne's transition into the superhero that is Batman. Zero Year is one of the best storylines and origin stories while we're at it to have been featured in a Batman title and sees the Crown Prince of Conundrum systematically take control of Gotham City by flooding the streets and changing its landscape from metropolitan to post-apocalyptic in a single night. Still, in the first half decade of crime fighting, Bruce Wayne must step up and embrace the mantle of Batman if he wants to save his city. It's a fascinating read that showcased the Riddler's genius level intellect and what he can really do if he sets his mind to a task. We'd seen this before, 
during his stint as a reformed yet obnoxious detective post-Hush, but Year Zero was the enigmatic showcase needed to bolster the Riddler's status as a top-tier Batman baddie. Though he spent much of his time in Arkham since then, as DC's infinite frontier continues to gradually unravel, we can't wait to see what other riddles the main continuity Riddler has for us. I am heavy forward, but backward I am not. What am I? The answer is TON, T-O-N. Backwards, I am not. Alternate versions. Of course, no major comic book character can go mainstream and not have alternate versions of them existing in parallel universes. The Riddler has at least three, and another that comes from the Marvel DC crossover fiesta that is Amalgam Comics. This variant of Riddler is called Big Question, and is a hybrid of him and Marvel's Kingpin. Named Edward Nigma Fisk, Big Question is an obscenely wealthy and monstrous huge man who is obsessed with foiling his own felonies by leaving clues for superheroes to discover. While we find it hard to believe that any iteration of Wilson Fisk would be willing to give up anything he acquires, let alone willingly, we must admit that green is a good color on him. The next variant comes from DC's Antimatter universe. This version is named Edward Nashton. He calls himself the Quiz Master and is a superhero that protects his Earth from the crime syndicate of America an alternate and evil version of the Justice League of America. However, at the same time that the Prime Edward was reforming his ways and becoming a law-abiding detective, the Quizmaster began losing his grip on sanity as he tried and failed repeatedly in reviving his dead daughter. Now, going by Enigma, he decided to become a super villain and do anything necessary to bring her back to life. Thankfully, Enigma was stopped before he could do something reality-breaking and resumed his superhero duties alongside his daughter, now operating as the Void Hound. There was another enigma in DC continuity, but this one's origins were decidedly more hilarious. During the Emperor Joker storyline, where Joker steals Mr. Mr. Mixelpitalik's reality-changing powers to remake the universe in his own image, he also creates a version of the Riddler called Enigma, who has been described as an irrational man of mystery. After this version of Riddler realizes what the Joker is up to, he sides with the JLA in an attempt to stop him, but fails. As the Joker destroys him, the JLA and the universe at large. A final variant of Edward Nigma exists on Earth 3 and is a superhero much like his antimatter universe counterpart. Also called the Riddler, this variant has his own version of the Bat family. The Riddler family is romantically involved with Three Face and is the stepfather of Duella Dent, the daughter of Earth 3's version of Joker, aka Jokester. Just a friend, but you can call me the Riddler. Riddler's abilities. Much like most of Batman's rogues gallery, the Riddler has no innate superpowers, but uses his enhanced human capabilities to augment his vile schemes. By far, his most powerful weapon is his brain. He is a puzzle master extraordinaire, capable of inhuman levels of lateral thinking and deductive reasoning that has allowed him to outwit Batman on more than a few occasions, especially during his time as a reformed detective. The Riddler's obsession with mind games stems from childhood trauma and a deep desire to always tell the truth. He expresses both by crafting elaborate, often fatal riddles that allow him to keep his enemies on their toes without technically lying to them. That's one of the reasons why he initially hated his tag team partner, Clue Master, calling gimmick infringement on his shtick of leaving indicative clues as opposed to riddles. But eventually, they squashed the beef and formed a pretty formidable duo. As a lifelong admirer of Harry Houdini, the Riddler has trained to become an escape artist himself and can break out of any predicament he finds himself in, using his knowledge to stay on the run and reverse engineer his signature traps. While he doesn't know any specific form of martial arts, he's more than capable of handling himself in hand-to-hand -hand combat thanks to his trusty cane, which has a multitude of gadgets and devices concealed within. He can project holograms, bypass security systems, and cause electrical blasts with it, helping enhance his chances of survival. He also has an array of gimmicked weapons that give him a tactical advantage, which are clearly meant to mock Batman. Like the question mark grappling gun, exploding jigsaw puzzle pieces, and the Riddler mobile complete with a triple question mark on the license plate. His ability to use these devices and equipment in conjunction with his genius level intellect is what makes him an all-time great Batman villain. So riddle me this, what is it that is always coming but never arrives? Quickly, quickly. 
Riddler's appearances in movies, animated shows, and live-action TV series. One of the defining supervillains for Batman's character itself, Riddler has been adapted over 17 times for multimedia purposes, ranging from movies to TV shows, both cartoon and live-action, as well as multiple games under the Batman Arkham series. Frank Gorshin was single-handedly responsible for the character's explosive popularity. The Riddler had appeared in two issues in three decades before the 1966 Batman live-action TV series came out. Over the course of nine episodes and one feature film, Gorshin transformed the character from a unitard-wearing, puzzle-spewing nuance to a genuinely unsettling menace whose in-lore presence has since been dramatically expanded upon. So much of the Riddler's current appearance is thanks to Gorshin. The iconic green question marked business suit and purple derby hat that has since become his standard wardrobe. He towed the line between calmness and craze mania so perfectly that Heath Ledger based his portrayal of the Joker on Gorshin's Riddler. In this little game, I am the ace of Trump. Another iconic portrayal of Edward Nigma comes from legendary comedian Jim Carrey, but we'll let you decide whether it's for the right reasons or the wrong ones. Personally, we thought that Carrey's OTT take on the Riddler fit his natural charisma and sense of humor like a glove, and was a major highlight on an otherwise disastrous silver screen outing for the Batman franchise. Apart from these live action adaptations, Riddler's presence in animations has also been quite prolific, ranging all the back to Super Friends, Batman, the animated series, and Batman Beyond, all the way up to recent Young Justice cartoons and 2019's Batman Hush, which has one of the bolder interpretations of Jeff Lebb's classic series. Though he's not a major antagonist in any of the titles, Riddler is an integral inverse presence for the video game series Batman Arkham, frequently being associated with data packets that help Bruce out with his investigations. As you can see, Riddler has enjoyed 50 plus years of mainstream popularity, and that comes with its pros and cons. The pros being the character hasn't become saturated despite its longevity, and cons being the Joel Schumacher sized baggage of being in Batman Forever. But that is something the character might not have to carry around for too long. Let's play a game, just me and you. Riddler is the major villain in upcoming movie, The Batman 2022. On August 23rd, 2020, DC fans all across the world gripped their cell phone screens with hushed exhilaration. Matt Reeves teased the film at DC's virtual fandom event, and the clip immediately set the internet ablaze. Tuned to a haunting rendition of Nirvana's Something in the Way, submerged with Michael Giacchino's composed score, it gave us the first look at Robert Pattinson's Dark Knight, whose on-screen trajectory is poised to be somehow darker than the Nolanverse. So far, we've seen Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman and Colin Firth's Penguin mucking it up with a pre-JLA vigilante Bruce Wayne. And at the center of it all is the face-timing, duct-tape-wielding, ski-mask aficionado that is Paul Dano's Riddler. From the few trailers and viral marketing sites we've seen so far, Reeves seems to be pulling inspiration from a lot of different classic Batman stories, with Zero Year serving as its foundational base. The costume design for Dino's Riddler and additional information scoured from the trailers suggests to us that this movie is going to take the hush route and then spin it to fit Reeves' narrative. But only time will tell. Needless to say, we're drooling with anticipation. Ever since Warner Brothers executives ruined the Snyderverse and Ben Affleck's Batman with it, we've been clamoring for someone to come around and do justice to the character once again. Matt Reeves has specifically stated that he wants to explore Batman's moniker of being the world's greatest detective with his vision, and who better to foil his deductions than the Prince of Puzzlers himself. The Batman releases in the U.S. on March 4th, 2022, and we'll be spending our time sharpening our minds and practicing our riddle-solving skills till then to keep up with Gotham's crazed genius and his diabolical plots. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. You're through, Nigma. Sorry, boys, but you'll never find me.